boat. I get it. It's the new thing. Well, at least it appears so on YouTube. It's a bit vogue, but for me, it's not a new idea. I've been banging on about this for about three and a half, four years, and the planning process has been uh, around about that time. But the trouble is, if you want to buy a boat, you need the hard cash, you need the capital, you need the spondulis. And at the time I considered this idea, I didn't have an awful lot of money. So I went old school, I saved. And I put myself kind of four years ago in what we now know as lockdown. The disadvantage to that is I've become a bit of a recluse. The concept of buying an arrow boat was more was more about necessity than than anything else. I separated from the family at age 50 and I felt at the time that getting a mortgage would be quite a challenge of someone of that age. I, I've got enough money perhaps to rent, but I believe once you're in that, that renting segment, it's very difficult to get out of and kind of, you're almost locked in for life. And I didn't want that. Essentially, you're paying somebody else's mortgage. So I looked at all sorts of other avenues like tent, uh, caravans, uh, van life, motorhomes and, and small homes, small houses. But essentially the main effort was to buy something outright. Boat seems to fit the market. I went to work on the 18th of February 2018 and I said to everybody, I'm going to buy a boat. Oh, they said. We've been on one of those before. No. Have you not been on holiday on one? No. How do you know you're going to like it? Well, I don't really. But why don't you go on holiday and see, it, see if you like it and then invest your money into buying a boat? Well, I didn't get that option when I joined the military 30 odd years ago. You see, it's about buying into the culture. And if you didn't like the culture of the military at the time, then you kind of didn't continue to join, or you didn't join, or you didn't continue to with the military. And I suspect it's the same with the narrowboat world. It'd be a little time for adjustment. I get that. You can't use electricity in the same way as you do a house. You can't leave the taps on, you can't have a bath, you can't, there's lots of things you can't do on a boat that you kind of take for granted in a house. I get it. But isn't that a good thing? In that you're more conscious of your um, surroundings, you're more conscious of the environment because you have to save electricity, you have to use water sparingly. Otherwise you're filling up water tank all the time or you're charging your batteries all the time. But of course, there's no option B. Because it's happening.
when I went to work and I told everybody I was going to buy an Arrow boat, I said, oh, I YouTube it. Now, four years ago, there weren't too many people, slack handful of people on the YouTube telling us about their life on the, old, on the waterways. And now it's risen exponentially. Mainly with young people, but you know, there is the parts of the Grey Pound doing it too. I'm adding to it. I didn't necessarily want to, but because I told everybody at work I'm going to YouTube, I've kind of boxed myself into a bit of a corner. And what I wanted to cover on this YouTube channel has kind of been taken up by lots of other people. Um, so I've lost first mover advantage. So basically, I want this YouTube channel to be slightly different to everybody else's. And having researched a little bit, I think there's, there's an element for me out there there's something that I could do to add value. I went to Crick this year and I spoke to some marine finance people who told me their interest rates were 15%. That's a bit expensive. I mean, I, I appreciate the risks to marine finance are greater than mortgages, but 15%. I mean, you can get, uh, if you shop online, um, at 8%, but I think you know people are taking advantage of um, the need or the requirement or or the desire for people to live or to change their lifestyle on the water and I kind of think that um, measuring the elasticity of demand of how much people are prepared to pay as well as the uh, the supply and demand issue in the short the short supply of boats all of this has uh, has an effect of of how boat prices are changing. Bit of a cliche coming now. The boat market's a bit buoyant. People are snapping up all sorts of boats. So if you want to kind of get on the uh, on the lifestyle of living on a canal, you have to move quickly. Boats are selling like hot cakes. Um, for example, if you get a good boat, it can be on the market from hours to a couple of days and probably no more than a week. Even the second hand boats are flying off the shelf. Um, and, and those are the project boats. Uh, I was watching a YouTube channel where um, they've only recently, last six months or so, have been on the, on the canals. And the marina that bought, that sold them the boat, offered them the opportunity of selling it back to them. Um, such as the demand for life on narrowboats and what doesn't help for the new boats is the commodities market has has changed slightly so still prices have shot up so even to buy a new boat now is a lot more expensive um, just in steel and lumber costs so everything now is is a little bit more challenging on on the narrowboat world does that mean the only people that can afford to buy a boat now are those who are a little bit more wealthy? I've noticed um, certainly on the YouTube circuit, uh, there's a lot of young people uh, YouTubing on the, on the waterways um, as it's an alternative way of life because it's a boat is cheaper than, than a house. And there's, there's some lots of people doing up project boats and they're doing a fantastic job. Unfortunately, I can't draw a straight line with a ruler. But um, I think the demographic of the canals are changing. And to bear that point out, when I was at Crick, I was talking to some fella who used to have a boat and um, he's recently sold it. Oh, why is that? I said to him, hated it. Oh, okay. Any particular reason? It wasn't the boat as such, he said. The people have changed. That's interesting. That's interesting. Culture generally trumps everything. You need to buy into the culture. But I wonder if, if because of the demographic of life on the canals and the waterways is changing. London's mobbed, um, overcrowded, some people say. Um, but I wonder, I wonder how life's going to change.
I am absolutely looking forward to this being my backyard. Perhaps not this space per se, but this. Water, greenery, looking at the sun at the end of the night, watching the world go by. How good would that be? Oh, it's great.